Hey guys, Luke here, and we're here to do the round five wrap up now. I probably should be doing round six wrap up at this point. It's that bloody late, but I thought better late than never. Now I've got to be honest, I've been pretty busy lately, so I haven't seen all of the games. I've probably seen about half the games. I have seen some highlights and you know talked to people, seen what other people have said. So I think I can kind of give an opinion on each game. So um, apologies if I get some things wrong. Speaking of things I got wrong, my tips they were awful this week, just absolutely awful. And I think the Broncos in front of the home crowd will be able to get the job done. So I'm going to go Broncos 1-12. Although in the home crowd, maybe the Titans will do something good, but I don't think this week. Panthers 1-12. However, it is in the Hunter. It is in Newcastle. So for that reason, I'm going to take the Knights. Could be a dumb move, maybe, but I'm going to take the Knights 1-12. For that reason, I'm going to be tipping the Bulldogs 1-12. Wrong, 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 wrong. Anyways, that's the intro done. Let's get into the wrap-up. So the first game of the round, it was the Broncos taking on the Tigers. The Tigers obviously got the win. We saw Michael Cheekham score at the end there. Now, I saw bits and pieces of this game. I didn't see the whole game. But it kind of just seemed a, another disappointing game for the Broncos. I mean, it's another loss for them. I predicted the Broncos to win. Obviously, it didn't happen. The West Tigers, uh, Josh Reynolds in the side, seemed to be doing the job. Um, just, you know, a good combination. They scored a lot of points, um, which isn't like they've been scoring points before. But... Uh, I mean, last week they didn't score many points. Uh, goal kicking's been a big, a big issue for them. But you know, I, th I think it was 30 points they scored this week. That, that's great. That is great stuff. Uh, and even though they did concede a fair few, they obviously got the win. They did enough to get the job done in front of uh, a SunCorp Stadium as well, which is which is a hard thing to do. Not many teams win at SunCorp, so Tigers can be proud of their efforts. The Broncos, on the other hand, just. Just what, what can you say? I mean, Darius Boyd's not doing anything. I mean, most of the team isn't really doing anything. Um, a lot of drop ball, a lot of errors. I, I really, I can't explain why they're playing so bad. I mean, the team's not overly that much different to last year. Uh, obviously, Wayne Bennett's not there, but you think even so, they would be getting a few more wins than what they had. Uh, now, I didn't expect Broncos to come out and be like amazing this year or anything, but like I said, you just expect them to have a few more wins at this point, but... It's just not gelling for him. I, I, like I said, I can't even pinpoint why. Maybe the, the halves, obviously, are a bit of an issue. I think McAuliffe doesn't offer much from dummy half. Just their spine in general, like on paper, um, you know, they get talked up a lot, hyped up a lot, but they don't really produce much. Whereas on the other hand, the Tigers, I mean, Robbie Farrow's been very good this year. Uh, Reynolds and Brooks combining pretty well. And also their back row, like, you know, your Garners, and I think he scored a try. Um, you know, lots of... Um, guys who aren't really any names or anything, but you know, they're producing the goods every week, which is positive for Tigers. So yeah, it looks like Tigers had a pretty good win. Broncos have a lot of soul searching to do. Now this next game, the Titans taking on the Penrith Panthers. Obviously the Titans won. I could not believe it. I didn't see this game. I was at work. I came home. I expected out of this whole round, I thought Panthers were a sure thing. I know the Panthers have not been good, but the Titans, they hadn't won a game at this point. I, I took the Penrith Panthers. I thought they were just going to have that little bit extra class. I thought, you know, Maloney and Cleary were finally going to get things together. Wasn't meant to be. Uh, the Titans pick up a victory. First win of the season. So good on the Titans actually getting the job done there. Um, Dahl Copley, I think it was, burning Edwards up the wing. That was terrible. Like, if you're getting burned by Dahl Copley, you know things are bad. And, um, yeah, if you're a Pen Penrith Panthers fan, uh, you know, I feel bad for you. Because this team should be doing way better than what they are. I'm not going to put it um, on Ivan Cleary. I don't think it's his fault, but he definitely hasn't added anything to their side. They didn't look any better than they did last year. In fact, they looked 10 times worse, and, you know, they practically got the same side. So, questions must be must be asked pretty soon. Uh, for the Titans, though, it's pretty good for them to finally get a win after all these weeks of, um, you know, looking at them and going, geez, when are they actually going to get a win? They finally get the win. Um, it wasn't the most convincing win. A bit of controversy with the Bryce Car, I think. I think it was definitely, you know, a penalty try. But, um, you know, nonetheless, they got the job done. Ash Taylor injured, though, which is, you know, a bit of a sour point for them. But I think it just shows that, that Titans coaching is it's just not good. Uh, it took Brimson coming into the side, like injuries and stuff, for him to actually get a run. And, um, yeah, they need to find a spot for Brimson in the side permanently. I don't understand this, you know, sheltering him. Like, he's good. He's good. Get him in the side ASAP. Next up, we have the Cowboys and the Melbourne Storm. Melbourne Storm coming out for victors. Now, for large parts of the game, Cowboys were in it. Storm weren't overly convincing, uh, but that's the that's the beauty of the Storm team. Um, we saw against the Bulldogs last week, they don't need to play at 100% every week to get the job done, which is probably why they end up, you know, they've ended up in the last, what, three or four grand finals. They can sort of 
time their run a lot better than a lot of teams. They just sort of coast through the season, they get the wins, they do what they have to do to get in that top four, and then they turn it on for the finals. Um, and once again, you know, going up to Townsville, it's no easy feat. The Cowboys, their back line is just, it's not good, man. But at, at the same time, like, they, they were in the game for large parts of it. Um, the Storm... The Storm weren't impressive, like I said, but they get the job done. And that's all they need to do at this point of the season. Just need to get the wins, get to Origin, get through Origin unscathed, and then turn it on for the rest of the season. And so far, they're on track to do that. Melbourne Storm, just such a well-coached team. Just, you know, as long as they have Cameron Smith, they're going to be good to go. I expect them to make the finals, which is something that, going into this season, I was thinking, yeah, Storm... Probably not going to do well, but here they are, just at the top of the table. Just what a team. Cowboys, on the other hand, yeah, they're, they're another team who should be doing a lot better than what they are. But, I mean, in hindsight, looking at their back line, like, their back line is atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. So, I don't know. They've got such a good forward back, um, which is even to help with such a bad back line. So, yeah, I don't know. I can't see them making the eight. I'm sorry, Cowboys fans. On to the Saturday games, we have the South Sydney Railroads defeating the New Zealand Warriors. Now, this was a game I actually saw. The Warriors, they, they blew this one. They should have won this. I know Blake Green, didn't uh, he didn't play. Pulled out in the warm-up. Peter Hiku moved into the halves. Harris DeVita played pretty well. But yeah, they, they really should have won this. They had a pretty good lead going into the last 10, 15 minutes. And the Rabbitohs, they just turned it on and they got even. And they, obviously, Cody Walker just absolutely obliterated the Warriors the whole game. But he scored the winner. Um, I thought they were going to kick a field goal. Obviously, Cody Walker had other ideas, grabbed the ball, and went and scored and won the game. But yeah, I, I can't get over like the Warriors that. Also, the Rabbitohs. I, I can't get a read on them. The Rabbitohs. First few weeks, I was thinking, oh my god, they are so bloody good. The last few weeks, they have not looked that good. Um, but is that more due to the fact that the teams that have been versing have been playing a lot better? I mean, they, they lost to Manly last week, and I thought that was the shock that they needed. Um, Manly played pretty good, but, you know, Trevojevic went down injured, and I thought it was pretty poor from the Warriors to not go... Uh, not the Warriors. Pretty poor from the Rabbitohs to not go on and get the victory there. But I thought this week they'd come out all fired up, and they would, you know, put the sword into the Warriors. But the Warriors, away from home, like, they don't travel too well generally, but they looked the way better side. Like, Rabbitohs... I'm uh, not way better side, but, you know, I thought they looked the better side. Rabbitohs got pretty fortunate to win that one. Um, yeah, the Rabbitohs, they really need, need to sort their stuff out because um, they might get found out in the future. I mean, they had an impressive start. They beat the Roosters in round one, but if now they're struggling to beat teams like the Warriors. Not against the Warriors, but, you know, they're not like an elite team or anything. Or are Warriors a lot better than what I give them credit for? Is You know, is them competing with the Rabbitohs, is that pretty fair? I mean, the Warriors have been playing pretty well for last few weeks, so... Maybe Warriors are a little bit better than what, uh, what I actually thought. But, I mean, yeah, I think the Rabbitohs, they need to do a little bit better in the future. But they got the job done. That's all that matters. Cody Walker, outstanding. Damian Cook, outstanding. Sam Burge is very, very good. Um, yeah, they got to figure out what they want to do now that um, Inglis is definitely not coming back there. Corey Allen on the wing. I don't know, Gagai. You know, they got to work something out there. Braden Burns also injured. But I set them to be firing once the finals comes. But... Yeah, it wasn't a convincing win, that's for sure. On to the second game of Saturday night. We have the Newcastle Knights taking on the Manly Warringah Seagulls. Now, I could not believe the result. I didn't see this one. I was at work. I came home. My dad's a big Manly supporter. And I came home and uh, I asked my mum, said, oh, who won? Did, did, um, did the Knights win? Expecting the Knights to have absolutely flogged Manly. She said, oh, I don't know. I looked it up. Saw that Manly had won. I could not believe it. I believe the first words I said was, what the actual f***? It just it blows my mind how bad the Knights are this year. Questions have got to be asked from Nathan Brown. Like, I know it's starting to get a little bit more popular. Uh, media starting to pick up on it. But, like, this is such a terrible start. Every year, the Knights have been going, yeah, yeah, we're, we're rebuilding, uh, you know, waiting until Nathan Brown gets, to, gets the team he wants. This year, they have recruited heavily, and they have done absolutely nothing. Mitchell Pearce looks like a shell of a player he was at the Roosters. He looks so bad this year. Um, Caelan Ponga... He's doing his best, but pretty much at this point, it's just a one-man show. Like none of the back lines doing anything apart from him. Their forwards aren't very effective. David Clemmer is making a lot of meters, but apart from that, like who really, who else really is? Is their back row a, a little bit weak? Uh, maybe Fitzgibbon is. You know, he was pretty good last year, but relatively an unknown. Cerny Mataria, bit of an unknown. But Tim Glansby at lock, he's not the best. Like, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Their hooker position is is a big. 
is a big question mark over the hooker position. But I mean, I feel like Nathan Brown has had enough time to coach this side to be way better than what they are, and they are just not producing at all. They're not even getting close. Mainly on the, on the other hand, I think are actually a well-coached team. Uh, Des Hasler is getting the best out of these players. It tends to do it. I was very harsh on Des at the Bulldogs. Um, but he, you know, you can't you can't deny he has been a good coach at different times in his career. Very, very good coach, and he's definitely showing it now. I think he belongs at Manly. He's showing it. Even without Tom Drojevic, I thought for sure they'd get towed up without him. Not the case, though. Um, I think it was Brendan Elliott back there at fullback. I didn't think they'd win a game with him there, but they did. Uh, Jerry Evans is, you know, he's on fire at the moment. And then you add in there, four-pack is playing very, very good. But I think the big telling point of this game was out of Noah Blake's try. Just the fact of how easy it was. Like, legitimately, I could have scored that try. That's how bad the Knights nice defense was. And I think that said everything about the Knights' nice effort this game. And, um, yeah, just very disappointing for the Knights. But Manly on a roll at this point. I can't believe I'm saying that. Now on to the Cronulla Sharks and the Sydney Roosters. Now, the score was 30-16. to 16, Roosters picking up the victory. But I think the Roosters were the better team by a mile. I know the scoring does say it, but... That try on halftime, um, Latrell Mitchell scored it. Oh my god, I'm so annoyed. I got rid of him um, in my super coach for Blake Ferguson. Blake Ferguson gets no points, and Latrell Mitchell finally pulls a finger out and actually does something this game. But Luke Curie, he's just absolutely dominating this season. Um, I think he's easily been the best player. I know in the Dally M rankings, he's not the best player. I think Cameron Munster is. But yeah, Luke Curie, in my opinion, has been the best player by far. Um, he's just on another level. He needs to be playing for New South Wales this year. But um, yeah, the Sharks, like they had a late fire at the end, but they didn't really offer too much there. Um, the Roosters, they're just, they're just going good. And it's kind of scary, the fact that I don't think this is anywhere near the best that they, they can play. Um, a lot of plays still missing for them. A lot of plays playing out of position. Yeah, it's scary for the rest of the, the rest of their teams in the NRL at how good this team could possibly get. Um, especially the fact that Kiri is dominating, but his half partner is Cooper Cronk, one of the best halfbacks maybe in the history of the game. It's just it's genuinely scary. I've got to say, like the Roosters, bloody good. And now they did score a lot of quick tries. Like I think it was just that that try in half time. Sean Johnson, I don't know who he was doing with that ship, whatever the hell he did, um, which resulted in. Roosters getting the ball and then having like 10 seconds to score and they did that just killed the game in my opinion Sharks just so deflated and Roosters came out on fire for the first 15 minutes of that second half and just went bang 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 Scored a few tries and it was game over from there on and they coasted home um, Like I said the Sharks sort of had a little bit of a comeback at the end there But there was no way they were ever gonna win it was just more for making the scoreline a bit more respectable but yeah, the Sharks, it's not a terrible performance from them considering who they took on, but um, yeah, the Roosters, they're just, they are just a class team. Now onto the game I think you've all been waiting for. You've been waiting for me to talk about this. Uh, the Dragons absolutely towered up the Bulldogs. Now, I could talk all day about this. I could rant and rave and, you know, say this player was shit and that player was shit for the Bulldogs. And this is coming from a Bulldog supporter, if, you, if you're not aware. Big Bulldogs fan here. And, I mean, just one of those days, it felt like nothing really went right for the Bulldogs. Uh, the Dragons, like, did they play super amazing? At times they did. They did some good things like that. Corey Norman, or oh, he didn't score it. I think Ben Hunt scored it. But Corey Norman, you know, did the little spin and all that. You know, there was a few good moments from the Dragons, but a lot of it was more just bad defense from the Bulldogs. Just terrible defense and just terrible play overall. Now, Alkenbar for the Bulldogs, um, a lot of talk about him in the last few weeks. I was a bit worried before he even played this game. Um, obviously, he's very big, very damaging with the ball. You love that. Um, you love to have that on the wing. The problem is, I have not seen him catch a bomb in the first three weeks he's been here, in here. And from all reports, he can't really defend. And he's kind of showing that. A lot of tries go down his side. Um, got Kerrod Holland not playing well. I mean, there's not, there wasn't really anybody who did play well for the Bulldogs, to be honest. Um, but yeah, he dropped a lot of balls. Even just like pretty much everybody dropped the ball um, for the Bulldogs in more ways than one. Um, but our, our completions were the best part of our season. And going into this game, you'd think complete your sets. So, like, I really thought the Bulldogs were going to win this one or at least be in the contest. Um, I don't think the Dragons have been that good this year. Like, they've been getting the job done, but they've kind of been grinding out games. This was, they did definitely not grind out this game. Just on a whole nother level to the Bulldogs. And like I said, I don't know if that was due to Dragons being that good or the Bulldogs being that bad. Probably a combination. Um, speaking of combinations, Corey Norman and Ben Hunt finally sort of getting it together. Um, even Duffy at the back there looked quite uh, threatening at times, although he didn't really 
you know, he was creating half chances, didn't really um, take him, but at the same time, he's creating those little chances there. Um, I'm not sure what they're going to do with Lomax. Like, it seems like a waste of a bench spot, but the back line, like, who, who can you get rid of at this point? They're all playing pretty well. Um, but yeah, like, I don't really know what to say here, apart from the fact that the Bulldogs are absolutely f***ing pathetic. Now, into the final game of the round. Now, I only saw bits and pieces of this game. Um, I think I saw the first half. Like, I, I thought the Eels were kind of in the game. I saw Ferguson had his nose just smashed, and I remember having a laugh at him, complaining about, um, I think it was White. I was going to say Caesar in the number six, but it was Jack White, and sort of roughing up his face there, and um, he ended up dropping the ball. But, yeah, the Raiders actually playing very, very well this season. Uh, on this video, like my predictions video, I did tip the Raiders. Meanwhile, on my Supercoach tipping, or whatever it's called, my um, you know, Daily Telegraph one. I actually tipped the Eels. It's kind of like a last minute thing in the video. I just said the Raiders because I was talking and I was like, geez, I'm talking up the Raiders. How can I go against them? And uh, luckily I did for the video because they absolutely destroyed the Eels. I think it was 18-0, 19 nil, something like that. Eels never really in the game. Blake Ferguson on Supercoach only had 10 points. That's woeful for Blake Ferguson. Usually so damaging, but didn't really do too much whether that's due to the broken nose or not. But um, yeah, this Raiders slide actually playing pretty well. Sam Williams, I think, has been a big, big difference to this side. It's kind of crazy how um, they get rid of Caesar and they bring in someone who can actually control a game and direct the team around the park, and, you know, it's actually working. Jack Whiten at 5'8", as well, I think he's getting a little bit better. Obviously, kicking game, I don't know if he'll ever have a strong kicking game. Kicking game is pretty woeful at 5'8", but in terms of his defense, defense is outstanding. It might even be worth just having him in the 5 position purely for his defense. He is so bloody good in defense. Um, really, I'm a big fan of Jack Whiten, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe not off the field, but on the field, a big fan of Jack Whiten. Um, but yeah, their, their team their team is firing. firing. Rapana's back in there. The English lad's playing very, very well. Hodgson doing what Hodgson does best. Um, Harv's working pretty well. Nicole Klodstad, outstanding at fullback. What a pickup. What a gem he was. An unknown before this season. They've thrown him into first grade, and he's been... Probably one of the buyers of the season, in my opinion. Um, I don't can't really think of other people who might be. Maybe Ferguson or someone. But yeah, Nicole Klotz, that outstanding. I I, I threw him on my super coach. I went, yeah, whatever. You, you play a few games, get me get me a few points. But he's killing it for the Raiders. But um, yeah, Raiders very very good. It was at home, um, so probably to be expected that they would play well at home. It's just a matter of the Raiders need to find some form on the road, which they haven't been able to do ever really. But I don't know, maybe this is a year, maybe they're going to make the eight. I predict them to come last. Definitely doesn't look like that's going to happen. Looks like my boys, the Bulldogs, will be. But um, yeah, Raiders doing very well. The Eels, I wouldn't be too worried. Uh, it's just one of those games. Every team sort of has it. I think the Eels will bounce back pretty quickly. But um, yeah, it's, it's not a good sign for Eels. But yeah, like I said, I think they will bounce back. Anyway, guys, that is the end of the video. Hopefully, you did enjoy it. Sorry for it being quite late. Um, just being busy. But I will be uploading tomorrow. We'll be putting up... The, uh, the preview for round six, so I will definitely make sure that it's done. So, um, yeah, don't worry about that one. Anyway, guys, make sure you go ahead and give the video a like if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's on the screen right now. It's Mr. Luke and YT. Also, go ahead and add me on Snapchat, Mr. Luke and YT as well. And give me a like, follow. I can't remember what the one is, but just go and follow my Facebook page, Mr. Luke. Been posting on that quite a bit more. So, um, yeah, that's all my, my outro done. I'll see you for the next video. Bye, guys.